Alright guys, here we go with another of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We got a new case to investigate now, and it looks like it's gonna have to have us forget about what happened previously, so we're gonna move on from there and see how it goes. So with that said guys, hope you all continue to enjoy watching. Uh, let's keep it going. Alright guys, welcome back. When we last left off, we were still talking to uh, Inspector Gregson. Lord Barrack Van Zeeks, who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGill had told us about him before the trial, didn't he? When Van Zeeks stands for the prosecution, they called the accused his sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. This Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty, is that it? Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector. That in yesterday's trial against Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Nataholdo secured a verdict of not guilty. Ha, and what of it? Oh, well, um, I think. That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? Did he just shove his food in his pocket? <laughs> what happened to that bloke in the end, huh? He's dead. Ah, Magnus McGilda came a cropper in that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? What? What are you saying? Look, if Van Zix could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles. He works magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long think about that if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? Right, well, I filled you in and requested and I'm very nearly out of chips. So I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Briar Road, you said, didn't you? Where the incident took place? That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. You've branded him a criminal already? He's as good as shaking like a leaf in his cell, he is. It'll give you a chuckle if nothing else. He's inmate 53. Speak to the jailer and he'll show you the way. Inmate 53. Thank you. So there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of the Bailey, they say. Is something troubling you, Mr. Naraholdo? To tell the truth, when I recalled the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. That takes courage too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent, you could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in a cell. And I for one wouldn't find the sight of that funny. So if I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try. So I think I'm gonna make some inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think you had to ask? After all, I am your, ju I am your judicial assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes! Let's go! She is so eager. Alright, so... The prison, right? February 19th, local prison cell number 9. So, these are British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. Yes, and having experienced it in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Narohodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently, our client is in this cell here. But it's also dark at, but it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. 
Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop hiding at the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I... Am I a cat as yet with no name? <laughs> Calling me by a number? It's utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Mr. Narahodo, what? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea, but I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tirade of complaints was in Japanese. That's an interesting gentleman. Oh, shh, quiet. They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening. Even now, I... I can sense it. Um, right. So, there you are. You've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it. You're a ghost. A ghost? We mean you no harm, prisoners. <laughs> are you... Japanese by any chance? This is... Beyond my wildest dreams! Forgive me for that outburst before, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown and here I am in frightful fiction of foreign land. So hearing the sweet sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damp dark hellhole was a... Uh, most monumentally moving moment. Who could have guessed that this new client, Lord Strongheart, assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese? Ah, what compassion my fellow countrymen show to dispatch a first class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student. Noble, nurturing, never failing Nippon. Did this guy take some classes from the Ginyu Force? <laughs> A first class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what's happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can, I will. Shut, stay, sullen, and silent. My guy here is uh, a little too over eager. I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I am a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryonosuke Narahodo. And I am Narahodo-san's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Notably, notoriously named Natsume. Soseki Natsume. Okay, you are something. Indeed, sir. Alright, Tsuseki Natsume. What are you about? Tsuseki Natsume-san. What an unusual name. Call me Tsuseki, please. I am a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean an alias? That's right, Narahodo-san. No! 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 Don't be so prosaic! It's much more refined than that! And haiku. That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery. And now this. It's beyond the pale. Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No. I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh. But... Just because the government tells you to do something, does it mean you can do it? No. What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. I see. Only the other day, I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words on whitewashy. 
<laughs> I almost didn't finish that part. <laughs> you must be a man of great standing. Oh yes, so I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. Alright guy, what's the accusation against you? Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Soseki-san? I didn't do it. I didn't commit that atrocious murder. Murder? Oh, no. No, no, it's alright. The woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed. With a knife. Right before my eyes. Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up in here? Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? <laughs> oh yes, how selfish of her. It's the curse. The curse of London. It's... Incredibly, inexcusably, irritatingly inconvenient. So, Soseki-san, was there a scene, but he didn't see the attacker? No, he was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. Alright, I'm trying to be in sync with his little Ginyu Force outburst here, but sometimes it's hard. It's vital that we find out more about the case. Alright. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books, and I was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. Is everything accursed to you? <laughs> sure, the bookshop wasn't accursed too. Even Vianelsky agrees with me here. As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, wearing a green overcoat, she was. And just as I went over to overtake her... She suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. How terrible. I called out to the woman, but she didn't move. It... it was like a... Ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard! Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran, as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. Oh, that didn't paint you in a good picture now, did it? That's... not good. They'll... they'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Soseki-san, was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English and a young woman at that? I'm a diffident, shy, timid, unsure. I can't talk to people. I... I see. A young woman unknown to Soseki-san. And at the time it happened, who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one. Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else in the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm. What conundrum? <laughs> what do you mean, Tsusato-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if what tsuseki san has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim and that there was no one else to see him. Then, he apparently fled without having been seen. I did! I did! But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit. Ah! You! What did you just say? Nothing. I, I didn't say anything. Oops, perhaps I thought a little loudly. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was how did Soseki-san actually come to be arrested? Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh, yes, she's right. It... It was him. That accursed great detective. He led the police to me. Of all the bad luck. A cursed great detective. Could it be? I shall never forget the man's name as long as I live. Uh-oh. With his hearty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness. Brash, big-headed, busybody, begone. 
May you be cursed until the end of your days, Herlock Sholmes. I knew it. Mr. Mr. Sholmes? <laughs> Herlock Sholmes. Of course. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after the nightmare had unfolded the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a silver of hard cheese, sliver of hard cheese, when some men suddenly burst into the door. They started shouting at me. This is the police. Put the weapon down. Yes, it was a thin sliver, and yes, it was hard, but I wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting, dietary, discrimination devils. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Ch Cheshire cat. Cheshire cat? Cheshire. That! Herlock Sholmes! It's... it's actually just Herlock Sholmes. He's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman. Me, the weak, stooped kitten of a man. Stupid or stooped? I wonder what great deduction process led him to this conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Sholmes deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, um, the thing is, I was, I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were. That's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing question after question at me. In impossible English. Fiendish foreign film flammery. <laughs> well, we were in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I, I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, yes I do, and I'm fine. The next thing I knew, I was in manacles, and before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine? He's not fine now. Mr. Narahodo, Esquire. Oh, you can just call me Mr. You can just call me Narahodo. And when we're speaking English, a simple Mr. is more than enough. Oh, yes. Um, alright. Yes. They've... They've really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, uh... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself on a study tour. Uh, a student? I would... I have defended a case in the old Bailey. Only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, Narahodo-san. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm sort of a locum lawyer, I suppose. But, but that armband! That's the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire! It's a keepsake from the friend who should have been here. He was my best friend. A, a keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, who do you mean? The lawyers. All the British defense lawyers. They won't defend me. Goodness, why? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before, when it happened, there was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Sasekisan. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them, someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing about me before, in my earshot without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said. And, of course the foreigner did it. They've even had the gall to say the man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful. They're wrong! I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there on the streets. I traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But, no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. So, at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. 
You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. Soseki-san, it's just that. Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it'll give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you. Welcome, student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire. We should be going then, Narahodo-san. We have a case to prepare for. Alright, time to go. This guy is very eccentric. Alright, so if we're going to be doing any investigating, it will be on Briar Road. Briar. Briar. I want to say Briar Road. I really do. I'm calling it Briar. Ah, look at the new area. So this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah, look! Mr. Narodo! Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know. But Mr. Narahodo, to see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd ever come to come this close. I thought it was going to say to see this. To a real Bobby's helmet. What? The, the helmet? <laughs> of course, I have to try one on one. I have to try one on one day. Well, I hope your Hattie dreams come true. Oh, Gregson is back. Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't on the Taurus Trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So you've been to the holding cells then. What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Hmm. We'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ah, the Stone Cold Air rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of Stone Cold Air. That... makes it worse somehow. Let's converse some more. Scotland Yard. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, man. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh yes, doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep. Wraps on their windows with a long pole, did it myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the, of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. Can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles, that's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's... That's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my. And I suppose in between all of those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well? And chase after criminals trying to evade the law? I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle th those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. 
I'd always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Matahodo. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. About the case. It happened at around 5 in the evening two days ago, just there on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area. I happen to have on me. You can take it with if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's your policy to give lawyers defendant suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Alright, so we got the local map now. Anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else in the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Hmm. Well, hold on a second. Let me check out that map. Alright, can I? So we only have Briar Road and Calabash Road and Mirskum Street, if that's how you pronounce it. Well, I know Mr. Natsumi is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am... The precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It... What? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah! It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see that. There are witnesses now. Alright, well... Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man... And the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah! A policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a bobby. Catching them, banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like in court tomorrow. Oh. I know that he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. As your, as your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned I could have warned me of that too. Oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What do you bring him up for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Alright guys, I'm going to have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. Until the next one.